Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation. My name is Dr. Claire Hamor, and I get to be the intern minister of this justice-seeking, creative, playful, joyful congregation. I'm so glad that we're all here to worship, to notice, to be present together. We'd love to begin by recognizing any first-time visitors today. Anyone joining us for the first time? Can we, um, can we give them a, a little round of applause, a little bit of love? I'm really glad you all are here and we invite you to have coffee hour with us outside under our brand new tarp. Um, so there's actually shade, it's kind of amazing. And um, we'd love to also invite you to take a visitor card when you head out um, and you can fill out information and I'll send you an email. We'll send you more information about us and what's coming up. So glad that you all are here. In her book, Braiding Sweetgrass, Robin Will Kimmerer writes, paying attention is a form of the reciprocity with the living world receiving the gifts with open eyes and open heart. Today's service is focusing a lot on Kimmerer's book, Braiding Sweetgrass. And we approach Braiding Sweetgrass with uh, an energy of, oh, there's a copy right here. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. 
um, we approach it with an energy of curiosity. Um, as a non-Indigenous person, I am very curious about what she's writing about, right? And her invitation for us to think more deeply about the world is the invitation I want to extend to everyone here today. This is not about taking anyone's traditions or even repurposing them, but rather looking at them and honoring the really incredible people that have been here for many, many years before us, which is important to recognize at the beginning of our service, the many people who were alive and took care of this land for many, many centuries before we ever arrived. We are grateful to the youth people and to so many others who are still here taking care of the land and still inspiring us to be better stewards of the earth. I would like to invite us to begin by singing in the Teal Hymnal, number 1073, The Earth is Our Mother. We will be doing verses one through three, one, two, and three, and then we'll repeat the last two lines on the last time. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. Hey, younger, ho, oh, younger. Hey, young, young. Hey, younger, ho, oh, younger. Hey, young, young. Her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take. Hey, younger, ho, oh, younger. Hey, young, young. Hey, younger, ho, oh, younger. Hey, young, young. The earth is our mother. She will take care of us. The earth is our mother. She will take care of us. Hey, younger, ho, younger. Hey, young, young. Hey, younger, ho, younger. Hey, young, young. Hey, younger, ho, younger. Hey, young, young. Hey, younger, ho, younger. Hey, young. As Mim and I light the chalice, I would love to also share with deep gratitude for our musicians this week, which is a lot of extra work for folks. We have Marion and Susan and Meg, and I'm joined today doing the service with Mim. Will the hungry ox stand in the field and not eat of the sweet grass? Will the owl bite off its own wings? Will the lark forget to lift its body in the air or forget to sing? Will the ri rivers run upstream? Behold, I say, behold the reliability and finery and the teachings of this gritty earth gift. Come, Come let, let us, us worship, worship together. together. Now, if you would, let's repeat the congregational affirmation which I think is printed in your order of service and may someday be on the screen, but we all know it. Well, we don't all know it anyway. Love is spirit of this church and service is called. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek to learn in love and to help one another. We'd love to begin this service by inviting us into a space of meditation. And so I'll take us through just three breaths together to be present and aware and alive in our body. And then I'm going to read a moment from the preface to Braiding Sweetgrass, which is an invitation for you to imagine as you hear it. So I invite us to begin by letting our eyes be closed or looking down, whatever is comfortable, having a soft gaze, feeling our feet on the floor, feeling our back in the seat. 
feeling the weight of our eyes as we take a big breath in, hold it and let it go. Another big breath in, hold it and let it go. And one more big breath in, hold it and let it go. And breathing as is comfortable for you. Kimmerer writes, hold out your hands and let me lay upon them a sheaf of freshly picked sweet grass, loose and flowing like newly washed hair. Golden, green, and glossy above, the stems are banded with purple and white where they meet the ground. Hold the bundle up to your nose. Find the fragrance of honeyed vanilla over the scent of river water and black earth, and you understand its scientific name, Hercoli odorata, meaning the fragrant holy grass. In our language, it is called wing shock, the sweet smelling hair of mother earth. Breathe it in and you start to remember things you didn't know you'd forgotten. I'd you to take one more big breath in smelling the sweet smelling hair of mother earth and letting it go. When you're ready, we'll come back. Our time for all ages today is an invitation for you to be storytellers. It's oftentimes me reading a story or telling a story. And so I'll start by telling the story, but I want you to imagine uh, your own as I'm telling it. And the invitation is to think of a story when nature surprised you, when nature interacted with you in a surprising way. So a few years ago, I was in Italy writing my dissertation and I was in the very Southern part of Italy called Puglia, and there are these huge olive trees that are hundreds, thousands of years old, some of them. And the land is very flat and it's very desert. And there are these tiny homes called Trulias, which they built all the way back. The one that I stayed in was built in the 700s. Okay, so they're almost a two foot thick stone wall that goes around the outside. And there's just one door and there's no current door on it, right? And so there's just a little curtain in front of the door. And so I'm sleeping in this nook that people have been sleeping in for 1300 years. And I had no idea uh, that there was something magical happening outside. So it's the middle of the night and into the Trulia walks this sheep with a huge cowbell on it, a sheep bell, bong, bong, bong. And it wakes me up and I look at it. I'm like, what is happening? This is wild. And it starts bat, bah, 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 over and over again. I'm like, what is happening? I'm trying to sleep here. So I get up to push the sheep out of my room. <laughs> and when I do, I realize that it's a blood moon. And it's the moon seems to be so big that it takes up a quarter of the whole sky, just the way that you're seeing it in that exact moment. And you can climb up to the top of the, of the building, up to the top of this tower, and just stand there seeing the horizon in every direction and having this moon looking back at you. This really powerful, this spiritual experience with this being that just arrived uninvited into my room in the middle of the night. And so I invite you to turn to someone near you and to just share a moment of nature surprising you, a moment of the earth coming in to give you the gift of surprise.
to close out that storytelling, can you turn back to the person you just, you just shared with and just thank them by just saying thank you really meaningfully to them? Laura Wallace writes this beautiful poem, as frozen earth holds the determined seed, this sacred space holds our weariness, our worry, our laughter, and our celebration. Let us bring seed and soul into the light of thought, the warmth of community, and the hope of love. Let us see together, hear together, and love together. This is the time in our service each week when we do see together and hear together and love together by sharing joys and sorrows in our personal life that has happened. If you would be willing to share, I just invite you to stand and I'll bring the microphone to you. If you'll share your name with us and then what your joy or sorrow is, you can be as, as literal or as vague as you'd like to be, but this is an opportunity for us to hold each other in the ups and downs of life. And what I ask is that after each person shares, we'll respond by saying, we hear you, and we hold you and we care for you to close the loop of witnessing that person. Hi, my name is Leo and I have a, a, a sorrow or a concern rather. I have a good friend who ended up in the ER twice this week and on Friday he was admitted at the hospital with heart failure, but Perhaps, perhaps it is going to be good because it's a myocarditis, which is an infection of the heart muscle. So hopefully you will be recovering. So I'm really worried about him though. So for you, Leo, holding your friend and your friend, we say, we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Last night, uh, we got to see Katie's youngest. Katie's up there running Zoom for us today. We got to see Katie's youngest in the Harrington's production of Wizard of Oz. She played the lion and did an absolutely wonderful job. It was an absolutely wonderful performance. She, she killed it in that role and it was just phenomenal. <laughs> so in celebration for the big lion, let's say we hear you, we hold you. And we care for you. So I have one child off to Hawaii, one to go. <laughs> uh, so she got there late last night. So that's a celebration. Um, and then the other thing, big change happening in my family is that my husband's mother uh, broke her hip a few weeks ago. She's probably not going to be getting back up again. So I don't know if she has days, weeks, or months, but she's got lots of family coming in to visit. Um, my husband's there now, but this is a pretty big shift in our family. She's a Southern matriarch. And if anybody is here from the South, you know what a powerful person that can be in the family, so. Thank you. And gratitude and blessings for your youngest or for, for the little going away and for, for people at the other end of life spectrum. We say, we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. I'm Bob and this is my wife, Mary. We're celebrating our 46th anniversary today. So we wanted to share that joy with you. <laughs> and in celebrating that beautiful joy, let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Hi, I'm Charlotte and uh, I have a joy, which is I've been online with you all for maybe about two years now, but this is my first time in the building. <laughs> and it's such a joy. And I feel like I'm, I'm seeing old friends, even though you might not know my face. So I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. So forgetting to <laughs> hear you hold you care for you in person. Let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Hi, my name is Kathy. My, um, I have the great joy of my favorite brother coming to visit on Wednesday and, and spend a few days and he might come. I've been trying to get him into a UU church forever. And because I'm doing the service next week, he might actually come. <laughs> and then my sorrow, sort of a sorrow, is Karen Brock, who many of you know, is leaving for Scotland first and then Morocco to teach again. 
and she sold her house and she's really moving kind of permanently. Who knows when we'll see her again. So she leaves on Wednesday also, and she's taking Ian with her. So hope all goes well. So for people moving in and out of our lives, let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. I'm Fran and I have two things that are troubling me. I have a neighbor named Cheryl. She's been sick since April. They cannot find what's wrong with her. She is in tremendous pain. She is exhausted, having breathing difficulties. She's had every possible test. Everything's negative. They don't know what's happening, but she's really in bad shape. And then I have a grandchild. They are really struggling right now. And uh, I was at the hospital again last night. She's, they are back home now. But it's, it's a real difficult time for all the family. So for your family, for your neighbor, and for you holding all of this, Fran, we say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Hi, I'm Elaine, and um, I have a great joy. I have four granddaughters, which I'm very joyful for each one of them. But on July 8th, my grandson was born and it's Alexander Ezra Axon. So we're very joyful to have him in our lives. <laughs> so for the joy of new life, let's say, we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. I'm Loretta and uh, I have a special granddaughter. She's adopted a Korean and, uh, and when she was a baby and she is severely dyslexic and they didn't really figure it out until she was about 12 and we've been working on it since. But anyway, she just turned 18 yesterday and graduated from high school and she's going to the University of Denver in film and she's very creative. So, but it's been a, a real learning experience. Thank you. So her, for her continued growth, let's say, we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Good morning, I'm Trish. I've shared with you, and I was not just a visitor, about um, challenges my daughter has had through life. And with the arts, it's the most extraordinary healing, music, heals her. And she sang with the Denver Symphony Chorus last Sunday night in Red Rocks with Josh Groban. <laughs> and I vicariously was doing cartwheels and weeping all night as I knew about this. Also, my 95-year-old mother, we really struggled with dementia and we had a crisis. She's now resettled in memory care. And the pianos, are why she feels at home. She's been playing now for the first time in years. So, <laughs> so for, the, for the incredible gifts of music throughout our lives, let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Hey, I'm Christine and I have a joy. I decided to go on a hike yesterday with my three dogs and I said, hey, I've heard about this Authors rock hike at Lori State Park. Has anybody done that hike? And it's not a long hike. It's less, I think it's, they say 1.7 miles on the map. I'm like, okay, that's doable. I get to the parking lot. I see people getting out of vehicles with hiking poles. And I'm like, huh, don't know about this. I've got my dogs. I don't have any hiking poles, of course. I have an old dog, a middle-aged dog, and a prime of life dog. We went all the way to the summit of Authors Rock with three dogs, practically, you know, I don't want to say I had to drag them up, but I really had to, you know, show them the way because that is quite a hike at the end. And then as we're coming down and we're getting away from the top, some person said to me, hey, there's another route to get back down to the parking lot. It's easier, but a little longer. Oh yeah. It was crazy. I went on a whole nother route, all these switchbacks, a much longer trail, running out of water. And my dogs were like heroes. They made it all the way. 
even though one of them refused to drink the entire trip. And so it was really great because we were worried, concerned about dehydration. Are one of us going to collapse out here? But fortunately, the day was not too hot. Another hiker gave us some extra water and we all made it home. And I was like, I can't believe it that my dogs perform like champs. And we confirmed that Ponderosa does indeed smell like vanilla <laughs> when you get in and sniff the trunk. So whenever I was kind of like resting in the shade, I'd go smell the Ponderosa. So it was a great day. And, um, you know, I, I, I like to be surprised. I'm not sure the dogs were so excited about it, but that was another surprise from nature. So <laughs> Thank you. So for your own surprising encounter, let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Tracy, and I just wanted to say that on July 16th, I believe, nationwide, um, it was released the 988 crisis line. Um, and I brought with me today a uh, poster from SAMHSA that I'm donating to the church. Um, so that will be posted. I, I spoke with Claire about it and it'll be posted for the church. I also have wallet cards. So if anyone wants a wallet card and it has the 988 crisis um, line number on it, come see me and you can have that with you in case you come upon someone in crisis you can hand that to them because it's very important. So thank you. Tracy. So for, for Tracy doing this work and for everyone who's holding crisis right now, let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. So I'm like, great, let's do those. So Tam and for incredible motorcycle rides, let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. And then she also added uh, sending healing love to Sue Matthews who had a procedure. Yes, yeah. For Sue, let's say we hear you and we hold you and we care for you. Is there someone over here? Yes, thank you. Okay, is that on? Yes, it is. Um, let's turn to number 123. It's in the gray hymnal this time. And we're going to sing this beautiful song through twice, but let's start the first time through on ooze, and then the second time we'll sing words.
curious about ways to invite you all sitting there to participate more in what we're trying to do up here. And uh, so today I have a silent reading for us to do. This is a beautiful creation story. This is a retelling of the Sky Woman Falling story by Robin Wilkimer in Braiding Sweetgrass. But we'd love just to give you the opportunity to spend about seven minutes just reading on your own the story, and then we will come back together, okay? You can also take this home. I thought it might be beautiful to have a copy, so. And I just invite, as you pass it to the person next to you, to just make eye contact with them. Give them a good morning. Say hello. Oh, great. Thank you. I'll put it on the website, too. Great. Yeah, if you're comfortable sharing, that'd be great. I didn't, we just needed more. Thank you. Are you a Wendigo? Wendigo is a Potawatomi name for that within us 
which cares more for its own survival than for anything else. I know there's a part of me and probably part of you that puts self-preservation above all else. But the thing is, the only way for any of us to survive is to heal and protect the rest of creation. It's all connected. The interdependent web to which Unitarian Universalists often refer. My first native teacher, grandmother Twyla Nitsch, with a Seneca who married a German, urged us to have an attitude of gratitude. Of course, life is a gift. Flowers and birdsong and palisade peaches and chocolate. But appreciation alone will not save the planet. All life is increasingly at risk. Our wanton obliviousness has resulted in fires and floods and other environmental horrors. They will not cease until we cease take treasures like Yellowstone or Yosemite or Rocky Mountain National Park or our own backyards for granted. Environmental calamities will not cease until we turn our hearts and hands to their protection. Over the recent past millennia, Native Americans, indeed most indigenous peoples, recognizing the wisdom in plants and streams and high cliffs, honored these things, protected these things, learned from these things. Now it is our turn. Ms. Kimmerer advised us to consider the tree in the Kleenex, the algae in the toothpaste, the oaks in the floor, the grapes in the wine. We need to recognize that all elements of our world are in some way alive. When we even halfway begin to acknowledge this, we can, as she writes, enter into reciprocity with the rest of the world, with the more than human world. We can do this with gratitude, stewardship, art, and in everyday acts of personal reverence. Our strange hunger for ease should not be a death sentence for the rest of creation. We need to find ways to understand and reimagine our relationship to the rest of creation. It takes humility to learn from other species. Humans aren't adept at humility, but if we open our hearts, use our hands and our money and our votes, we can help heal this planet. And in so doing, heal ourselves. One of the ways we walk our talk at Namakwa is by donating half of our collection each week to a new organization each quarter. And this quarter is the Thompson Education Foundation. And Thompson Education Foundation makes sure that kids going to school have everything they need, backpacks and supplies and food and these things. 
And so I invite you to give generously. In gratitude for our offerings, I invite you to repeat after me. We are so grateful for everyone in this space, on the Zoom space, and for their generosity in building a more loving world. In concluding her retelling of the Sky Woman story, Robin Wall Kimmerer writes, our stories say that of all the plants, wing ashk or sweetgrass was the very first to grow on earth. Its fragrance, a sweet memory of Sky Woman's hand. And so I invite you today as I complete reading Mary Oliver's Remember the Sweetgrass that we started as our chalice lighting to come up and to plant some sweetgrass for us, for our community, for our church, for new beginnings. And there are tiny seeds here, and I just invite you to press them. They don't have to go more than an inch in, so you don't go wild. Uh, and we have some water here, and so if you'd like to give a seed, if you'd like to place some water, I just invite you to plant this for us. We'll keep this plant in the sanctuary so that we can grow out of the service our own understandings of sweetgrass. So on your own time, I just invite you to come up if you feel comfortable and I will finish reading this Mary Oliver poem. Eat bread and understand comfort. Drink water and understand delight. Visit the garden where the scarlet trumpets are opening their bodies for the hummingbirds who are drinking the sweetness, who are thrillingly gluttonous. For one thing leads to another. Soon you will notice how stones shine underfoot. Eventually tides will be the only calendar you believe in. And someone's face, whom you love, will be as a star, both intimate and ultimate, and you will be both heart shaken and respectful. And you will hear the air itself like a beloved whisper, oh, let me for a little while longer enter the two beautiful bodies of your lungs. The witchery of living is my whole conversation with you, my darlings. All I can tell you is what I know. Look and look again. 
This world is not just a thrill for the eyes. It is more than bones. It's more than the delicate wrist with a personal pulse. It's more than the beating of the single heart. It's praising. It's giving until the giving feels like receiving. You have a life. Just imagine that. You have this day and maybe another and maybe still another. Someday I'm going to ask my friend Paulus, the dancer, the potter, to make me a begging bowl, which I believe my soul needs. And if I come to you, to the door of your comfortable house with unwashed clothes and unclean fingernails, will you put something into it? I would like to take this chance. I would like to give you this chance. We do one thing or another. We stay the same or change. Congratulations if you've changed. Let me ask you this. Do you also believe that beauty exists for some fabulous reason? And if you have not been enchanted by this adventure, your life, what would do it for you? I invite you to rise in body or spirit and sing with us number 1057 in the Teo hymnal, Go Lift It Up. And we'll sing this two times through. What I loved in the beginning, I think, was mostly myself. Never mind that I had to, since somebody had to. That was many years ago. Since then, I have gone out from my confinements, though with difficulty. I mean the ones that thought to rule my heart. I cast them out. I put them in the mush pile. They will be nourishment somehow. Everything is nourishment somehow or another. And I have become a child of the clouds and of hope. I have become the friend to the enemy, whoever that is. I have become older, 
and cherishing what I have learned, I have become younger. And what do I risk to tell you this, which is all I know? Love yourself, then forget it, then love the world. Robin Wall Kimmerer goes on to write, action on behalf of life transforms because the relationship between the self and the world is reciprocal. reciprocal. <laughs> I kept wanting to say reciprocity. It is not a question of first getting enlightened or saved and then acting. As we work to heal the earth, the earth heals us. I invite you as to close this service by saying together, as we work to heal the earth, the earth heals us. As, as we, we work, work to heal, heal the earth, earth the, the earth, earth heals, heals us. us. Thank you all so much. I invite you to coffee hour. There are newsletters in the back. If you're not on the email blast, we could sign up for the email blast in the back as well. Perfect. Thank you all. Have a beautiful week.